Okay, now it's okay? Now it's okay. That's okay, sir. Okay, so what I mean is, you know, only one X was there to cut some word and uh, managing, you know, it's a remote site. And there was a little fight between two colleagues. And the one gentleman was sleeping and other was waiting for the time when he will take that ax and cut his neck. So you have to ensure that no chance of muttering also is there. Like such tools are not being kept. So they can apply to murder someone. I hope it will help you to give a broader perspective why that camp inspection is important. It's not like only fire safety or only electrical safety. You have to think about the overall mindset of your employees. One gentleman, you know, he just put fire in one of the warehouse and the later on they interrogated what was the real root cause or underlying root cause of that fire incident. And they found it was an intentional attempt. It was done intentionally. And the reason was the supervisors of that gentleman was shouted without any reason. Terribly shouted on that guy and his self-respect was demolished. And he thought uh, no other option, you know, except uh, putting fire in the warehouse because he couldn't punch back to that guy. So, but to the total loss for the company. So don't expect that the people are emotionally intelligent like you. They can do many silly things. So we as a, a positive leaders, we have to think 360 degree. 360 degree, even one issue with 15 different directions and find out what can go wrong and how we can keep them safe, you know. And especially avoid overcrowding, like keeping so many unnecessary items here and there, or no set and order and putting more fuel in their rooms. You know. So no smoking, uh, have some designated smoking areas, but encourage them, smoking is uh, truly injurious to health. At least keep motivating them. see the condition that everything is okay and how these uh, LPG cylinders are being cut. You can check all these things. Sometime you will be happy, oh, everything is okay. And sometime you will see such kind of bad practices, highlight and take some corrective preventive action. You know, the, uh, many of our employees, they have short memory. And many of us have long-term memory. So we kept food and we forgot. And no one can check where that food is kept, either under the bed or you know, somewhere. Uh -huh. So uh, much better practice is you are the final camp inspector. The first inspector, they are the one of their own area. Encourage them, motivate them. You are the first inspector of your area. We are the final inspectors. So we don't want to see any such uh, abnormalities or kind of bad things, you know, within your room, within your toilet, or even nearby areas actually, into your surroundings, you know make them responsible but even one-to-one -one counseling if you believe is required go for one-to-one -one counseling or identify the big culprits or the people who are negative and they are not going to cooperate you know at least identify and put them aside and have one-to-one -one counseling and convince them this is for you i mean we are if we are talking about uh, electrical safety or fire safety and your safety so we are talking about you actually, we are trying to support your safety, you know. So make them realize and then see the result inshallah. But it all depends how you're gonna convince them. That is why we need mind changers, you know, the mind changers.
because of this pandemic and covid 19 number one element is exposed are the leaders the leaders are exposed you know the leaders we always thought they are the best leaders but they are the worst leaders in pandemic time you know in bad time actually because in good times anyone can be a good leader right but in crisis period how you react how to overcome and how you sustain your success and keep growing that is that is the real crux of your leadership same way if you are a person like a project manager or safety manager or, or camp supervisor or camp inspector even be a mind changer now how you have to be a mind changer <laughs> that is another journey i don't know your interpersonal skills i have no idea uh, about your uh, educational backgrounds or kind of your experience even but since it's a uh, sensitive topic, I would say. So, no harm to a value. Do your SWOT analysis and find out what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, how many opportunities for improvement I have, what are the threats within me as a professional I have. You know, it's not like SWOT analysis only for the businesses, even for ourselves individually, we can do it. And all the weaknesses and threats, try to remove and eliminate or reduce them you know and see the change inshallah within yourself but ultimately you have to be the mind changer you have to be the mind changer otherwise if nobody will listen you even you are doing a lot of inspections but no one is listening no one is bothering about it you know whatever you highlighted and they are not improving still is a failure still as a leader is a failure that is why we need to be the change ambassador the mind changer you know but how every individual is unique and you are the one going to evaluate yourself you know this is a good mind i mean trying to organize everything keeping neat and clean this is one mind actually not one room it's one brain living in this room and trying to manage you know things as per his own capacity and these are also minds, by the way. The minds putting everything here are the good minds, at least. But we have bad minds also. So find out those bad minds and give them some one-to-one -one counseling. Instead of putting everything outside, why can't you put inside the waste bin? Okay, so you can use inspection form A also for doing yes, no, or not applicable. Annual inspection should also be there as per, you know, GI 298.010. Inspection checklist form A in June of every year, the contractor camp supervisor shall conduct an annual inspection using form A. And make sure this uh, form C, like corrective action request, shall also be attached because ultimately, once you evaluated uh, what are the gaps or what things are not complying the requirements, of course, you need to put some corrective preventive action. So make sure they are time bound. All the actions must be time bound with target dates. Reporting, uh, yes, contractor camp shall submit a monthly activity report to CS uh, safety group at the end of the each month. And this more is include this weekly inspection checklist also. And ultimately it's a game of action report, corrective action report and monthly activity report as well. But all above things we can't do until we train properly to all our individuals or our employees. That is why the ultimate goal is to deliver some trainings and convince them. Training does not mean always in the classroom. This is another misconception that training means always in the classroom or always on the Zoom meeting. No, no, no. Training means maybe one-to-one -one discussion, one-to-one -one meeting with one gentleman, maybe on site, maybe by leading by example, you know, you are a role model. Show them with your actions, you know. This is another way, effective way to train someone. But anyhow, orientation is critical. Make sure, especially for the 
fire extinguishers, emergency response, first aid or BLS, personal hygiene and h plus training is given. Food safety training, at least level two and three, you can give them if you consider. Water treatment systems must be well aligned with the uh, portable water and chlorinated or the contractor is responsible to provide a water treatment system. But again, you need to agree with the RANCO. And I know refresh training is critical for this one to maintain. Weekly safety meetings must be there. And yes, you can report on a monthly basis. Five drills, minimum two five drills per year are to be held at the camp. And make sure you have five hundred uh, to be assigned to each uh, separate building. And also the fire warden shall assign to different floors or the multiple floor buildings. So it's not like only for one fire warden. Make sure you have multiple fire wardens so they can help, especially in case of emergency, especially for evacuation. And they must be third party trained fire warden. There must be some documented drills as well. And you can also put all these things in the monthly report, monthly activity report. Emergency disaster planning, again, another, because we are in Saudi Arabia, that means more chances of sandstorms. Now, heavy rains are also sometimes, you know, it's becoming frequent gradually then the earthquake and plenty of others. So make sure the emergency disaster planning is there. And not only these disaster plannings for such kind of elements, even take an example of invisible enemies or the monsters like H2S or ammonia or some other toxic gases releasing from your project or maybe coming from the neighbor side. So how are you gonna manage such kind of disasters? That's why the emergency response program is critical. So the camp supervisor and other key persons uh, need to be trained for this one. So camp supervisor and key person, including support staff, shall attend an emergency disaster drill once minimum per year. No harm to be capable for risk management or risk assessment training, how to identify the red zone areas or yellow or green and how to calculate that risk right the risk formula is probability multiplied the consequences or so how to calculate all these things how you give numbers one to five to probability or one to five to severity and consequences how you're going to multiply them if five multiply five is equal to 25 that means the area is a red zone we need to take immediate actions so again with your safety department all these things must be there for each activity, for each process, for each material, for each area, for each achievement, I would say. So go back and check within your risk assessment, either everything is well covered and existing controls are sufficient or you need to replant some additional controls. You know? Because ultimately we need to reduce the chances, the probability of incidents or accidents. Now, fire warden, train the trainer, training you can give, safety manual like SMS, level two, level three, food safety, or camp inspector, vehicle safety program, or various courses like HASCOM, H2S, fall protection, heat stress. Again, wherever Ranku is going to say is mandatory. So we have to do it. If it is like, or sometime now they are quite clear, either these training must be done internally or through third party. So have a training plan and clearly tick either this training can be done internally, if internally designate someone as an internal safety trainer. And if it is need to be done third party, tick this training will be done through third party. In third party, we have more than 3,500 training centers. You can go anyone who is approved by Saudi Arabia. Now records, uh, look at, uh, you know, proper traceability, proper certain order. Make sure you are well familiar about central camp admin team as well. 
And uh, how many members are there? Team supervisor, compliance inspectors, like especially the take from electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, civil engineer, and safety engineer. And also they have Saudi Aramco community services staff may also make inquiry. But that none of our business to be very on because this is a Aramco responsibility and they will definitely be watching us, you know. Yes, anything you want to discuss, please? So uh, don't expect within two, three hours, we will cover everything, but make sure, you know, I will share this presentation and whenever you get time, just go through. So consider it's a good start and later on keep it continuing because uh, yeah. this is, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to give some snapshots how, what key requirements we have to fulfill. Now the central camp admin team inspection, like meet key person, like camp supervisor, safety representative, five wardens are there, kitchen and bosses there, examine all requested documentation also, and discuss any issues regarding corrective actions. And you can conduct inspection of your facility. These are the some responsibilities like report to GI 298.010, paragraph 3.2, enforce the camp management, in source of the Aramco uh, sanitary code and provide technical operational advice and provide copies of safety training programs as well. You can conduct periodic announced and unannounced. Same suggestion I have for you also. If Aramco is following announced and unannounced camp inspections, same criteria you can implement internally, you know. Even internally, no need to announce every time at least some unannounced inspection must be done uh, yeah. from your surprise visit inspection yeah exactly then you can have a clear picture about the behavior about the conditions about yeah. the, all systems you know to connect because weekly if all, the, if all that inspection you will announce then the all is already prepared yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. Absolutely. So to conduct weekly revisits for high risk camps or those with incident involving fire or to perform follow up visits as well on quarterly basis and make sure to medium to low camps. And you can use uh, this methodology before and after. Take before and then after. Before and after. You know, even sometimes I say this one step can improve everything especially the visual management, the visible system will be improved. You. If you follow only these one step, like before you take a picture and then after you make responsible to relevant department and they improve and then you take another picture after. And keep it, keep it in your record, like make an Excel sheet or make a presentation in PowerPoint. And every time you improve something, take before and after, and put in the presentation. And whenever someone asks, what have you done at our campsite? What is your performance? Show your performance. <laughs> the huge presentation. This is what I have improved. This was the condition before. And now look at the area. You know. So your personal performance can also be highlighted through this method, like before and after. Okay, there were definitely contractor non-compliance penalty clauses or fine policy is there. To make sure the back charges to contractor company for someone else to do the work necessary to be compliant or contractor company being committed for future bid slats and even replacement of key contracting employees actually. So if we will not comply, we have to face some consequences for sure. Now, sanitary code can also be implemented as per the instructions given, you know, camp construction standards, approval page 171 to 190, applies to the required acceptable conditions for employee residents. And for this sanitary, uh, uh, you know, this code, it's also required that some of the general construction requirements like lighting, uh, HA or VAC or even plumbing or uh, fire control, all these things, all technical in the design phase, even, like I mentioned at the start of this training. 
because all these segments or all these standards must be incorporated during our design layout or during designing of our facilities actually. Now garbage, trash and ref uh, refuse shall be disposed of at minimum twice weekly from the camp. Now, how are you gonna dispose of? Imagine if you are hiring again third party to dispose of what? The waste. And imagine if they dump in the illegal area, the waste belong to your side and they are dumping in the illegal area, which is not authorized. And unfortunately you, you don't check them where they are dumping. And later on, any authority or any Saudi Aramco or especially LPD, because one incident happened in Jubei. I can't quote the name of the company, but they faced horrible uh, consequences, you know, because the waste was collected and even well uploaded on the container by the contractor, but he dumped in the unauthorized illegal area. And the LPD caught them in. And also make sure these uh, contractors are approved again by Saudi Aramco and even by, uh, I would say, PME. We call it Presidency of Environmental Meteorology of Saudi Arabia. Because everything is not like only Saudi Aramco, only Saudi Aramco. We are living in Saudi Arabia. So the Saudi Arabian legal laws also we are bound to respect it. So for 80 residents, camp shall have 12 showers, toilets, and urinals, and even hand wash basins, one more of each for every 10 additional residents. These are the sum of the requirements. That's why in the design phase, we need to incorporate. Toilet and shower room shall be located not more than 61 meter distance for a resident to walk. Or furnishing and increasing of a bed, mattress, you know, all these, uh, important elements to keep them in a relaxed, good manner. One table chair lamp. Sleeping room shall provide 4.6 square feet per meter for, for floor space for each resident, no overcrowding. So what are the most common problems actually? Fire safety is more common, housekeeping, overcrowded, and even unapproved electrical devices and cooking and sleeping areas and poor pest control. These are common issues. Poor maintenance of AC units. Main hazards, so normally we have fire from defective AC, fires from unapproved electrical appliances, and fire from cooking in dormitories and smoking. LPG gas cylinders, electrical hazards, food poisoning, and spread of infectious diseases. These are the common hazards of the camp. Some of the examples you can have like examples of financial loss due because of fire due to unapproved cables. Look at the consequence. Even it's highlighted by Arab News in July 2011, like seven day in Real labor camp fire. Seven killed and two seriously injured. Six of the victims were Indian workers and one Nepalese and safety measure was substandard. Even in, you know, this uh, six died in the labor camp place, like uh, even the fire hit through a labor camp owned by the contractor company in Saudi Arabia in Eastern province. And the issue was leaking LPG cylinder in the kitchen. So, you know, again, these are invisible enemies because any hazard which you can't see with your eyes, it can be H2S, it can be LPG gas, it can be any other toxic gas. It can be COVID-19, coronavirus. You know? <laughs> it's already there. Because unfortunately, we can't see it with our eyes. Otherwise, we will have would taken more care, right? In Tanajib camp, even though no fatalities were there, but still, it's gone fired. Yes. So we can learn from the, you know, the biggest learning phenomena. We can learn from our mistakes or we can learn from the mistakes of others. 
this is the best domain of learning because failure teaches us more lessons you know so we can learn from the incidents happened for the last uh, uh, 20 years or 50 years you can uh, google up or you can go to youtube and see how many incidents happened or still happening you know because of poor safety management system Another energy camp, and this is the biggest reason. That's why all these areas, the topics we covered, actually must be managed. And remember, it's hard to ensure hundred percent everything, but we have to try at least. At least we have to try, and. Uh, uh, what criteria I always apply, what we do is, we have a slogan, be a safety manager of your own area. Be a safety manager of your own area. If you don't want us to come every time and tell why this is not good, why this is not good, and you started feeling ashamed or embarrassed, if you want to avoid these embarrassments, Please be the safety manager of your own area. And then we start realizing. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much for your time, for listening to me, for, because even though a little bit the training is yeah. kind of, you know, lengthy training, but still I try my level best. To sir, sir, please, uh, could you hold on for this uh, topic? Then we will get the Q&A.